In probability, we need to know how many ways it is possible for something to happen. And I'm going to show you two ways to figure that out. First is permutations, the second is combinations. Permutations are what you're going to use when order matters. So for example, maybe we're having some kind of competition and we need to know who's coming in first, second, third, or fourth place. This is the setup that we're going to use, NPR. N is the total number of items, or uh, in the competition example, the number of people in that competition. And R is how many are going to be used. So for example, maybe we have 10 people that are running in a race, and I'd like to know who the first, second, third, and fourth place are. So from those 10, I'm selecting four. Now, if you were to do it by hand, the formula is going to be n factorial over parentheses n minus r factorial. So for the numbers that I have right here, that would be 10 factorial over 10 minus 4 factorial, which is the same on the bottom as saying 6 factorial. However, I'm going to encourage you just to type it into the calculator. If we go to math here on the left side, and we go over to PRB for probability. Um, and we go down, you'll notice that this choice is NPR. But the way it's set up, we actually have to go and put in the number first. So let's put in this 10, math, over to probability, choose choice NPR, and then put in the second number. So I got 10 NPR4, and that is going to come out to 5,040. So there's 5,040 different ways that people could win the first four places of a race if there are 10 people in that race. The second kind that I'd like to show you is combination. Combination is what you use when order does not matter. So I'm just putting a group together and it doesn't matter who I pick first or who I pick second, it just matters that you're in that group. And again, NCR, the same things are going to be. This N is the number of items. This R is how many I'm going to use. So let's say that I have 10 students in a class, and I'm going to pick a team of three for some kind of competition that we're doing. Now the team, it doesn't matter who is picked first, second, or third. It's just that they are a team of three, so the order does not matter. On this one, our formula to plug in is n factorial over n minus r parentheses factorial. So, so far the same, but then we add an r factorial on there. And what that does is it gets rid of the duplication that uh, exists when order doesn't matter. If I plug in these numbers, that's going to be 10 factorial over 10 minus 3 factorial and another 3 factorial. But again, I'm just going to go ahead and type this in. So I need to put in the first number, I'm going to put in that 10. I'm going to go to math, over to probability, and down to NCR, which is the third choice. And then I'm going to put in the 3. And that comes out to 120. There's quite a bit fewer in this case because it's removing all the duplication. That it doesn't matter if it was John, Peter, and Mike, or Peter, Mike, and John, or Mike, and Peter, and John. It would still be the same three people, that's just one team that's considered on there. So now the question is, how do we determine if we are using the permutations or the combinations? And the way that I've come up to remind myself of this is that when order matters, um, that's more of a professional. Uh, you're making sure everything is neat and orderly and in order. And when order doesn't matter, that's a bit more chaotic. That once you get your group, you can just rearrange them all around and you can have a, a variety of options. So here are a couple questions to practice on. How many different three-member teams can be selected from a group of seven students? Now, the team just has three members, and it doesn't matter who the first member is or second or third. So this is a bit chaotic, and once I set the three, they can move each other around and so on. So this is a combination. So from the seven, I'm going to pick teams of three. So I would go to the calculator, put in the seven, math, probability down to NCR and then put in the three and there are 35 different ways that I could get a team of three from those seven students. 
How many ways could 10 runners finished in first, second, and third place in a race? Now in this one, this is very professional. We want to make sure we know who's first and who's second and who's third. We don't want to mess up that order because then the awards would go to the wrong people. So this is very professional. And from the 10, we are choosing three. So I place in my 10, math, over to probability, choose NPR, and number three. And there are 720 different ways that they can win that. A basketball squad has 10 players. How many five-person teams can be made if John, the captain, must be on every team? So first off, it's just a team. So once we have those five players on there, it doesn't matter where they are in the rankings. But the only catch here is that John has to be on every team. So I automatically know John is one of the members. So for my purposes, I'm going to drop this down to figuring out who the other four are. And it's a bit chaotic once you pick the four. It doesn't matter who is first, doesn't matter who is fourth, and so on. So that is a combination. So from those ten, I'm going to pick four. Ten, math, over to probability, down to NCR, and choose choice four. So there are 210 teams that has John as a captain and has four other players. Okay, I'm going to leave you with two here, and then you can click on the link to see how well you did. How many poker hands, which is made up of five cards, can be dealt from a deck of 52 cards? And then also, how many different ways could 12 people be cast in a play if that play has five rolls? So answer these two questions. You can go back to if you need to see it again, and then click the link to see if you got it right.